Hey, what's up, everybody? So today we're going to be talking about Pokemon Unite, Tencent's newest attempt at a MOBA now on the Nintendo Switch. And while Tencent has delved into other games in the past, uh, specifically MOBAs, they've kind of had the issue of, well, they're on mobile platforms, so they kind of just don't feel that great unless you're really just playing on a tablet or if you're emulating it, which, you know, it's kind of defeats the purpose of playing a mobile MOBA. But Pokemon Unite actually feels absolutely amazing. You nearly have the same precision that you would have if you were playing on a mouse and keyboard. So those quick precise movements that you need to make in a MOBA game, it is incredibly easy to do so here. But what is Pokemon Unite at its core? Well, like we mentioned, it is a MOBA, which means a multiplayer online battle arena. For anyone who isn't familiar of, with the genre, you can look at games such as League of Legends, Dota, Heroes of the Storm, and this is where the game clearly gets inspiration from. Mainly, I believe Heroes of the Storm and an old League of Legends mode that was cancelled back in the day dominion the main objective of pokemon unite is going to be scoring more points than your opponent to do so you need to kill pokemon around the map oh god that sounds awful and you'll get a certain amount of points for doing so and then to score these points you need to go up to one of the enemy what we could call it towers or dunk zones and you need to channel a dunk this can be interrupted at any point by your opponent if you are hit so that's kind of the core gameplay loop to do so. And of course, to get stronger than your opponent, you need to kill more Pokemon, gather more XP, and become stronger to them. And since Pokemon Unite is a 5v5 game, this leads into a lot of different unique strategies. We have seen compositions that have played around being very bulky we have compositions that play around being very squishy but incredibly agile and doing high damage we have seen poke compositions so pokemon unite's early metagame seems to be pretty healthy as people are still trying to figure out what is best but one thing that we do understand is that the game is very action-packed the game length is 10 minutes guaranteed there is no way to speed this up aside from you or your opponent surrendering and honestly it feels really really good as a casual game if you're just trying to play a game or two after work when you're tired you could go in and get out no problem it's 10 minutes you know how long it's gonna take and matchmaking is instantaneous as a potential competitive game in the future it also feels really good uh, there are very clear objectives on the map namely rodham and dreadmaw uh, rodham will allow you to get instant dunks in your opponent's goal zone and dreadmaw will grant your team a shield and then of course <laughs> you can't talk about objects without talking about zapdos this is the big boss monster of pokemon unite if you are able to kill it it will turn every goal every dunk zone into an instantaneous dunk and give you a ton a ton of points so no game is truly over until zapdos is taken so even if you're incredibly behind capturing zapdos will allow you to win the game on the spot so this has also created a lot of strategies of denying Zapdos or trying to hard force Zapdos when from behind, saving ultimates. As you can see, there's a lot of nuance that goes into the game. And the reason I'm talking about this so much, because I believe a lot of people are going to think this game is incredibly simple. And while it is simple at the surface, there's a lot that goes into it. Now let's talk about the Pokemon that you can play as. So the game currently on launch has 20 playable Pokemon, and these Pokemon are broken up to different categories. We have the attackers, which have low health, but they excel at dealing heavy range damage you could think of these as pikachu or venusaur potentially we have speedsters these are namely the junglers in the game you'll normally see them outside of the lanes and these have incredibly high mobility and deal a ton of damage but they're very squishy we have all arounders these are normally the bruiser archetype they have a decent amount of hp and utility and deal a good amount of damage defenders are the tanks of the game mostly there for utility and dealing less damage and supports are just what the name says they're just pretty much supports so they have a lot of utility a lot of disruption and for only one character eldegross has healing so that's currently what the game has to offer in terms of playable pokemon you will get a lot if you start playing right now as there is a ton of free things being given out and a ton of free pokemon being given out at the moment now we do kind of have to talk about the monetization as well it's created a little bit of a controversy because one thing that tencent kind of failed at here is there is one pay to win model which I don't really feel like it's 100% pay to win, but it's still a practice that I am not very fond of. Anything that you can spend money to potentially get more stats in game is never something I will ever truly be a fan of. But what this is, is you eventually get items that you can hold and you can kind of think of these as the old runes from League of Legends or the mastery system. These will give you passive stats and you can use currency to level these up, up to a cap of level 30 and they get progressively stronger every time.
time. And the only way you can really do this is you can either get them drip fed to you by playing games and unlocking them to the battle pass or exchanging currencies for them, or you can spend money. That is really the only, that is the only pay to win model in this game. Everything else is very much just cosmetic. You have skins for Pokemon, you have skins for your character, and that's mainly it. But the held item system has definitely created a ton of controversy, and I would love to see this change in the future as I think something like this will definitely hurt its player base, especially when you're trying to target children. It feels very predatory. But even of all that, that has not really hurt my enjoyment at all. I know I say it's pay to win, but I really haven't felt it too much. And maybe it's because I haven't played against many people who have it, or I just, it's hard to tell at times. I've, I've, personally have dumped around maybe 70 games in total so far in the last couple days i know uh, i'm addicted but it really hasn't felt all that bad i've been enjoying the game so much in fact that i actually ended up buying a capture card and everything just so i could stream the game so yeah it's, it's kind of hard for me to really downplay the game because it really is truly a very easy free to play moba and it's honestly if you were ever trying to get into a moba right now and you've never played a moba i could not recommend pokemon unite more it is such a good game for beginners and and for veterans alike. I'm super excited to see where Pokemon Unite will take itself in the future. I'm incredibly excited to see where the competitive scene will eventually evolve and I'm, I'm incredibly invested at this point. I'm just trying to hit masters as fast as possible. That's that's how hooked I am. And and yeah, that's going to be all for me today, guys. Hey, look, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below. Sub to the channel if you haven't already and let me know down below in the comments exactly what type of Pokemon Unite content you would like to see. I plan on trying to make some uh, similar guide content like I did for Eternal Return. I've been putting a ton of hours into the game and I think I have a good grasp of a couple different characters right now but not near mastery just yet so yeah that's gonna be all for me today guys hope you all enjoyed the video and i'll see you all next time